Manchester's Not Part Of Festival this year hosts 158 events at 48 venues over 17 days with more than 1,000 artists and volunteers involved. From the 30th of June to the 16th of July you are invited to put your finger on the creative pulse of Manchester and see what happens when a festival stops treating artists as a revenue stream and gives them total freedom of self-expression. I'm here with director and writer Kelly Taylor, musical director and composer Michael Betteridge, and lead actress Gemma Deerfield. Now Kelly, what can you tell us about your production? It's very big number, chorus there, dancers there, very showy, very Bob Fosse dancey, isn't it? And then it just very the bird goes completely. Right. Yeah, the bird. <laughs> but then it just goes completely somewhere else, so you're not getting exactly what you're expecting to get. That's why we don't advertise it as a musical. Advertise it as a play with songs. A Fistful of Love is for uh, the Not Part Of Festival. We're performing at the AXM just near Canal Street in Manchester. We start on Wednesday the 6th of July at 7pm but the doors open at 6. Same goes for Thursday um, and Saturday. Friday we start an hour earlier and on Thursday we also have a matinee at 2 o'clock. Doors open at 1. You can get tickets on skiddle.com as well or you can go through the Not Part Of Festival website. I'm your buddy. Do you have any plans for the show after the festival? We're hoping to take Fistful of Love on tour. Gemma works with a guy called Chris Matic and he's going to make a DVD trailer for us of the theatre show that we can send off to different theatre companies. And we hope to take it on tour, I think, next summer. Um, but that can be quite a lengthy process. But as you know, once, once the festival's over, we'll be concentrating on getting the funding. Now, Michael's also been working on another show, hasn't he? Um, it's been hard, like, obviously, Michael and I have been working together for a good couple of months now, haven't we? Yeah, and I know is. he's been working on this other show, but we haven't discussed it at all. It's been, you know, yeah. I've, I've no idea what, what he's been mm. doing with that show. So I'm really looking forward to going to see what other work he's been doing as well. Mm -hmm. Indigestion is on uh, Monday the 4th of July and Tuesday the 5th of July at Lexus Arts Cafe on Dale Street. It's very different from a festival. It is a music, well, we call it a music theatre piece. But essentially what it is, is you, it's 15 quid a ticket, but you get dinner and some sort of theatre and music. But I won't tell you any more than that, oh. apart from the fact that you'll turn up, you'll be seated, you'll meet some new people. And it's an interesting, interesting show. If you like the theatre, be close up. So that's indigestion, not part of 4th and 5th of July. Um, there's also one thing I'd quite like to plug for myself. It's a not-for-profit organisation. I run uh, something called Northwest Women in the Creative Industry, and we will be having our next event sometime in September. Uh, we're on Twitter and Facebook as well, but if any women who work in media theatre or anything like that want to get involved, just join us on Facebook, because it's a really busy group. And like I say, all of our events free and everything we do is free. A lot of networking events and stuff like that you have to pay for or mm. you know or you find that the same people go time and time again and you're not actually networking with anyone you're just kind of ending up having a pint with your with one of your mates whereas this one we had about 100 women most of whom I'd never met before some of them were really big executives some of them working at ITV BBC big casting directors big agents and stuff like that and it was because we were catering to a niche that hadn't been catered for in this part of the country ever before so yeah, I'm just kind of hoping it keeps going at the, at the same kind of momentum that we've already managed to build up because it's genuinely helping people. So Kelly, going back to Fistful of Love, what first inspired you to write the story and how did you come up with the characters? When I originally wanted to write a script, it was at university and I wanted to do something different which was make the usual antagonist of the story the hero. And naturally I wrote gay characters, decided to use domestic violence and was really surprised at the amount of people that said does that really happen, domestic violence in the same-sex relationship? So then I was like, this is a story that should be told and hasn't been told. It was hard to find a way to show the violent scenes and the sexual scenes on stage. We wanted to push the boundaries of audience comfort, basically, but you can only go so far with it. So we brought uh, dancers in and we turned it into a play with songs, we like to call it, yeah. not a musical. 
Michael's written most of the music for the show. Well, I wasn't involved in the show right from the start. Kelly put out an advert on not part of the um, mailing list. You didn't give much information away at first. I remember you came over to my flat and we were talking about it en route. And it's something that was so different. And so different to what I'm used to doing, because I'm either very much musical theatre or contemporary classical composer, you know, like concert hall works. And Kelly was like, right, well, these are the songs, because originally it had a lot of songs in already, but not, not an original score, so you had the Michael Bublé number, uh, there was... Yeah, there was all songs from Cabaret, there yeah. was Hey Big Spender, there was Leona Lewis, yeah. it was such a mix <laughs> very of music. The original song I wrote, Blackness, was very Evanescence, and that was then always going to be Lorraine's theme when I went on mm. to write the original music for it. Yeah. Which character is Lorraine? Uh, Lorraine is the abuser. Oh, which is the one that Gemma plays? Yes. For me, the reason I got involved with the show mostly was obviously the unusual subject matter, but also the idea of incorporating music, in particular the dance, into the show. A lot of the theatre work up here is very northern drama, and there's nothing wrong with that, and there's a big audience for it, and I'm not being negative about it, but this was something different. Because I haven't really spent most of my life in the north, even though I'm from here originally, doing the northern drama stuff doesn't always ring true for me, I suppose. I've had a bit of a different life. Um, whereas this was something that I thought, oh god, I can get really excited about this. This is something totally different. Is it yeah. terrifying playing the abusing character? Oh god, yeah. I'm like, scared to death of really hurting Mary. <laughs> that's what I was just going to say, you could really hurt her. So what kind of things do you do? A lot of things, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm straddling her at times and punching her and slapping her and pulling her by the hair and throwing her around and, and yeah, I mean, it, it's physical. There are, um, but the, the difficult thing about the physical stuff is that it's not controlled. Because of the nature of the scenes and the type of character that I have to play, She, when she is violent, she is out of control. And then I have to go straight into a song, which is like, oh my god, I'm not, is my voice going to hold out? Because I've just been screaming. There's a great drag queen in there. Can't have a gay play without a drag queen. Danny Idola. Yes. Um, he's from London and he comes down to rehearse and he's absolutely fantastic, he's, he's really funny. He can't walk in heels, which is just hilarious. What's his outfit like? Um, oh, I bought them the other day, I bought dresses, and they're quite, one's quite an elegant dress, he's the MC, the compare of the cabaret bar. Mm. And his character originally existed to create light comedy, yeah. um, because it's a very dark piece. Um, so he pops up every now and then. Just to lighten the mood. Just to lighten the mood, just to make everybody <laughs> laugh. He's got a, a very elegant dress for one of the scenes, very long, flowy, black and white with like beads all over it. And then he's got a very short, silk purple dress oh with um, sparkled diamantes all around the top of it. And it's like one of these, like, like I'm wearing now some my bra showing. Like one of those <laughs> tops. Has um, he seen the dresses yet? He hasn't, but I emailed him yesterday and I've requested that he goes to get himself measured for a bra, which is very excited about that. So he's off to uh, get himself a bra uh, and get it all stuffed up um, so he can really fill out the dress well. But one of them's a boob tube dress, he's going to hate it, but it's going to be brilliant. Oh, he'll look great. Oh, he'll look fantastic. <laughs> and he's got some great wigs. He's got a long sort of red one and a big boof on blonde one. Fake eyelashes, the works. For booking information and further details on Indigestion, A Fistful of Love and the many other productions as part of this year's festival, log on to notpartof.org.